Welcome back to Heja Framtiden, the Swedish podcast on the future. I'm sitting here at Epicenter in Stockholm at uh, the Big Meat Conference uh, hosted by Sweden Food Tech. Uh, I'm in the podcast booth with uh, Lauri Reuter from Finland and Nordic Food Tech VC. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi. We just met three minutes ago. Uh, so <laughs> maybe tell me a bit about yourself. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm a recovering scientist. I I used to be very much in the deep end of of biotech research and and uh, work with cell cultures and uh, and all that funky stuff. Um, and then uh, made a big leap to uh, venture capital. So um, helping helping other scientists who have discovered something interesting to put those great tools in better use for a well better food system for the future. So, so how does Nordic Food Tech VC uh, work? What are you looking for? Um, so, we have a fund. We have uh, 42 million euros of money to invest in uh, early stage, really tech heavy uh, food companies in Nordics and Baltics. So, what we were sort of uh, especially looking for is uh, researchers who have some beautiful technological tools in their hands mm. that should be put in in better use so we uh, we want to help in those early stages of those companies putting putting a company up getting it going and uh probably hopefully doing something uh, something good for a more sustainable and healthier food system okay so it might not even be a business model or a company in place when you get in touch with them yeah exactly we have been uh, have been uh there with some teams that well they have the tools they have the technology but they don't even have a company yet so we can you know fundamentally we can even help help in uh, setting up a company and, and getting going so in that sense we are very early investors but then again quite often these scientists have been working on the solution already for a long time but in research context so that's sort of the the sweet spot for us yeah. so you must you must also wait until the the technology or the research is ready to go to market in a way yeah well our hypothesis for the whole whole fund was that there's a lot of that kind of research just lying around in the shelves of research institutions mm. in nordics there's a lot of lot of technology that would be ready to put in use but are for some reason just lying around and being maybe researched and researched more and more, but they would actually be ripe already to to put in in better use. So, are you always looking for something that solves a sort of sustainability problem? Yes, yeah, so, I mean there is there is several problems with food. There there is the climate, which is obviously a huge issue. It's not only not only stopping the climate change or or alleviating it, but also mitigation. How do we manage when the climate is changing? And it's also about resource sufficiency. How do we how do we produce more food with less resources? How do we how do we keep the planet alive? How do we uh, sustain biodiversity on the planet and health? I mean, we are we're looking at a massive health crisis uh, in 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 the whole on the whole planet, and a lot of that has to do with with our diets. So we won't be investing in anything that doesn't solve at least one of those problems ideally several of them at the same time i mean th- think of think of a um, food delivery company that gets your bananas for you in in 10 minutes instead of half an hour now yeah it's it's might be great but it's not really solving a huge problem for humanity or the planet yeah looking at the the list of uh, potential future unicorns in europe uh, in the food tech sector there's a lot of delivery uh, companies yeah, I th- I, there's been good statistics from from last year, for example, uh, claiming that pretty much two thirds of all so-called food tech funding is is to delivery companies of of some kind. Um, so we have defined ourselves as deep food tech investor, mm-hmm. so uh, investing in in the new technologies that come from scientific discovery or use something genuinely new technology to solve a, a hard problem. So uh, we're, we're looking at deep food tech mm. instead of instead of new recipes or new delivery companies. Yeah, we just listened to a, a panel discussion downstairs with um, uh, Gustav from Gullspong um, and his, uh, his colleague Peter um, being interviewed. And they said exactly that. Uh, 
I don't mind waiting an hour for the food to arrive to my door. I don't need it to be here in 10 minutes. Uh, solve real big problems instead, difficult problems. Do you see that more investors are working towards that kind of uh, uh, philosophy or vision as, as you are? Well, there are, there is many kinds of investors and there's many kinds of companies. And it's great that there's also food investors that invest in new food brands and new consumer products and, and also deliver it because, damn, I enjoy it. But... Uh, we 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 have we have our focus and i think that's really important for for solving solving the big problems but there is a diversity of investors and there's a diversity of companies and and that's quite often the most important part of this game finding matching the right company with the right right investors yeah. can you give us some examples of uh, what kind of companies you've been investing in uh yeah so far yeah sure um so um for example we've invested in a, in a swedish company called melt and marble um what they essentially make is beef fat uh, using microbes. So uh, if you have tried, I mean, any plant-based sort of meat imitating products, they pretty much all use palm oil or coconut fat because it's solid in room temperature and when you heat it, it melts. But it melts quite suddenly. So it might feel hard and fatty in your mouth, but when you when you cook it, it kind of leaks out of the product. Whereas animal fat, like beef fat, melts really slowly and gradually and gives you that lingering juiciness of, of meat. So they, they have made a fat that is exactly like beef fat and might replace coconut and palm oil with something more sustainable, but also something more way more delicious in the non-animal products of the future. Yeah, I've had uh, Anastasia on the podcast as well, actually. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, then you know all about it. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's a great example of something really nerdy and niche uh, in the technology sense, and it comes from science and university, and uh, then it's suddenly ready for market, and then you come in and you swoop in with your money to make it happen. Yeah, I mean, it, it's still not ready for market. There is a long way uh, okay. and a lot of things that need to be done. Um, but it's a good example of a company where the tools were there. I mean, Anastasia and the team have been working with the with engineering the, the organism for, for a very long time. They are very, very good at it. And now we're just putting it in, in good use in food system. Um, so right now we're in Stockholm and, and everyone's trying to profile Stockholm as a new food tech city, food tech hub. Uh, what other areas in the Nordics and Baltics do you think are uh, interesting or regions? Biotech is one. Uh, there's a lot of really, really good biotech expertise in in Nordics in in, in all of the Nordic countries. Uh, aquaculture is is obviously one thing where the Norwegians are particularly uh, good, and they have been working a lot on it. Um, but I would also say that you know farming in very harsh conditions is something that we are very good at here here in the Nordics, whether it's out there on the fields or in greenhouses. Um, it's it's tough tough place for farming up here in the north, and and we have developed tools to be really good at it because we have to be really good at it. But then also health. I mean, we have we have these very strong welfare societies where we are really paying attention to to health and healthy eating, uh, and created a lot of technologies around health. So, if we think that. In the future, we will see better and better tools in managing our diets and nudging ourselves to towards eating better. I couldn't see a better place to start than than Nordic countries. What about uh, the Baltics? You said you were uh, investing in the Baltics as well. Is there anything interesting happening there? Definitely, yes. I mean, the, the food tech ecosystem is still very young in in Baltics. Um, there are there's a handful of food investors, food specific investors already in Sweden, and and there's also well us in based in Finland. There's a couple in Denmark, uh, but there isn't really any in uh, in Baltics yet. So uh, I could claim that we are actually the the first food tech investor in Baltics because we operate also there. So it's quite fresh and young, but I but there's a lot of good teams working on on really bold ideas so i will i would say there is some pretty interesting stuff coming out of baltics pretty soon as well okay nothing you can uh, <laughs> say right, right now um uh, maybe not quite yet okay uh, i usually ask uh, what is your best tip for making the world a better place in the future yeah i mean we can all 
start shifting our diets right now. Eat more plants, eat a larger diversity of plants. That is the best all of us can do right away. You don't need to wait for any new technology or products for that. Our diets are one of the most important things that we need to change when we go towards the future. And we can start it right now. Great. And how do we get in touch with the uh, Nordic Food Tech VC? Th- well, through our website, nft.vc. Um, that's a good good uh, place to start. Or just reach out to me through any channel where you can find me. And you cannot buy NFTs on there. Uh, yeah, we <laughs> we really did a good job with the domain. <laughs> you can sell it for much more than you bought it for. Uh, we'll we'll see how the NFTs turn out in the, in the coming years. <laughs> Great, thank you so much, Larry Reuter from uh, Nordic Food Tech VC in Finland for joining me at Hey Framtid. Uh, thank you. Um, check out heyframtid.se for more information about the podcast and my other projects. Um, thank you, Sweden Food Tech, for arranging this fabulous Big Meat conference at Epicenter in Stockholm. Thank you for listening.